todos a todas y a todos. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Valentina y estoy aquí por parte de Community Language Cooperative para ofrecerles y garantizar su compromiso con la justicia del lenguaje. La justicia del lenguaje es un tipo de interpretación simultánea que busca crear espacios en los que no domine ningún idioma, espacios en los que todos puedan participar con el idioma de su corazón. Para lograr este objetivo vamos a utilizar la función de interpretación de Zoom, entonces lo que verán en un par de minutitos es que aparecerá un nuevo botón que parece un globo terráqueo en la barra inferior de su pantalla, en esa misma barra donde tienen los botones del micrófono, del video, del chat, etc. Vete hacia su mano derecha. Cuando vean este botoncito aparecer, hagan clic en él y seleccionen inglés o español como el idioma en el que desean escuchar y participar. Si usted está en esta reunión por medio de una tableta o de un teléfono, encontrará las mismas opciones para la interpretación haciendo clic en el botón que tiene tres puntitos en la esquina inferior derecha de su pantalla. Este botoncito dirá more o más. A few things to remember, I am interpreting simultaneously in Spanish is 20 to 25% longer than English. So if you do prefer to use English during this meeting, please be aware of your speed and clarity and remember to mute yourself if you're not participating. We also recommend that you read out loud any text that hasn't been translated in advance of the meeting uh, on PowerPoints, polls, chat box, et cetera, so that I can interpret it into the other language. Also, we suggest that if you're using acronyms, we, we suggest that you spell them out the first couple of times to avoid any confusion among the listeners or myself. If I need to communicate with you, I will reappear on video and do this sign to request that you speak a little bit slower or this sign to request that you speak a little bit louder. If you have any questions or any issues whatsoever with this technology, please let the whole group know by means of the chat box so that we can work together to address it. Un par de cosas que tener en cuenta es que estoy interpretando de manera simultánea, así que por favor recuerden mantener un ritmo de conversación cuando participe para que yo pueda comunicar su mensaje en el otro idioma. También recuerde silenciar su micrófono si no está participando y le recomendamos que si hay algún texto en español que no haya sido eh, traducido en el otro idioma, que lo lea en voz alta para que yo lo pueda comunicar al inglés. También sugerimos que si utiliza acrónimos o siglas, que las diga completas las primeras dos o tres veces para evitar cualquier tipo de confusión entre, quien, entre les, las personas que están escuchando o mí misma. Si yo necesito comunicarme con ustedes, reapareceré en video y haré esta señal para pedirles que hablen un poquito más lento o esta señal para pedirles que hablen un poquito más alto. Listo, muchísimas gracias por tenerme por acá. Ahora vamos a activar los canales de interpretación. Recuerden seleccionar el idioma que prefieran, en el que prefieran escuchar. Thank you so much for having me here. Please remember to select your lang preferred language channel and we can go ahead and start the interpretation. And Christy, you are muted if you're talking. Oh, yeah. There we go. I am now starting interpretation. Uh, you should be able to select your languages now. And Christy, sorry, you did start interpretation, but I wasn't assigned as a, the interpreter. Oh, one second, then let me go ahead. So you all are. There you are. Thank you. So again, thank you, Valentina. Um, I'd like to turn over our session now to our presenter today, Jose Luis Ramos, but first a little bit about him. Jose Luis is the Bilingual Business Sustainability Coordinator for the City of Longmont, who joined government after running his own business for over 10 years where he experienced the different needs of small businesses and the challenges of being an entrepreneur in the United States. He is an engineer and has a BS in computer science from California Polytechnic State University. Jose Luis offers a wide range of experiences and knowledge in business, processes with government agencies and strategies to make small entrepreneurs more productive and successful in their businesses. His specialties include restaurants, construction, IT systems, and he is fully bilingual in both English and Spanish. And now, Jose Luis, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. Um, well, welcome, everybody. 
uh, just wanted to make sure that uh, everybody has selected one of the channels. Uh, last time we tried this, uh, the, the default channel didn't work. So make sure you select either uh, English or Spanish for your interpretation. If you are listening to me and uh, and you have the default, then it's working. So don't worry about it. Well, uh, yeah, as uh, Christy mentioned, my name is Jose Luis. Uh, one thing that uh, is not on my bio is that uh, I used to be a restaurant owner. I had a restaurant for 11 years and, uh, and for calling. So uh, talking about businesses, I, I understand what uh, our Latino population have to go through when they, when they have a business. So that's one of the reasons why uh, I I love this job, and that's uh, I, I've been working uh, with uh, different businesses around here. Oh, anyway, I'm gonna start the the presentation. Uh, let me see. Let's share. I'm gonna share the screen. And Christy, can you please let me know if you can see the screen, please? Yes. Okay. It's the presentation. All right. So. Uh, my name is Jose Luis Ramos again, and let's go and uh, let's get started. What I'm gonna be talking about today is how to reach the, the Latino community. In my experience, when the, ever since the pandemic started, I have gone through all this process of learning, uh, failing and going back and doing that again. And it's been, it's been quite uh, challenging uh, because one of the, uh, the reasons why I got this job uh, uh, three years ago when the pandemic started was because I was bilingual and my focus was to, to work with minority-owned businesses. So uh, what I'm going to tell you today is about my experience and how that went and what kind of results we got. Okay, so we're going to start. Okay, I'm trying to... Right there. Okay, so... Primero que nada, tenemos lo que yo llamo la receta. La receta. En esta pantalla les voy a enseñar las diferentes uh, puntos con los que ustedes van a poder alcanzar a esta comunidad que tiene sus necesidades especiales para poder hablar con ellos. Tengo algunas opciones, construir relaciones, hablar su idioma, entender su cultura, ofrecer lo que ellos necesitan, ponerse en su, en su lugar tener modelos representantes y utilizar los canales correctos. Okay, so I just went through the whole recipe. This is what the presentation is going to be about. Uh, the reason why I did it in Spanish, so that uh, for those of you that, uh, that, uh, that don't speak Spanish, uh, you can understand what businesses have to go through when we come to them, when we bring programs to them, and then we don't, uh, you know, we don't have their language uh, available so that they, they don't understand what you're talking about. They don't know. You might be saying the stuff that you know about, and you might be uh, bringing the programs that they need. But if they don't understand, they, they don't understand you. They're not going to work with you. Right here on this slide, I have a a, a photograph that I took uh, in one of the community events that we organize. Uh, notice how on the right side we have a table, and that table is empty. Look at the person that is sitting there. That person is not interested, is not uh, looking, you know, trying to bring people in. Uh, but on the other hand, look at the big line on the, on, the, on the background. That big line was making a line because there was a table that was offering help to uh, sign up for uh, how to get a driver's license. Okay. And the person that was there looked like the community that was there. And also that person uh, spoke Spanish. So everybody was lining up for that table, but nobody was paying attention to this table here. So uh, what did that, what does that tell me is, is, is the, the fact that when you're, uh, and, and if you look at the sign, it says uh, Centro de Recursos de la Corte. See, so it was uh, information about the court system. Uh, they had it in Spanish, but the person that was sitting there did speak Spanish. So uh, you can see the difference. People is trying to get to the information that they can relate to. Okay, so we're gonna go to the uh, following slide. And one of the questions that I have for you is uh, if you can please, if you have access to the chat uh, uh, there, can you write down uh, what is the strategy that you use today to communicate with uh, with people, with, with the Latino community specifically in this case. Uh, do you use any of the samples that I have here? I have email, 
I have focus groups, I have blogs, surveys, uh, newsletters, all of those things. Can you please just start writing on the chat? You know, how many, uh, how many of those uh, I, um, methods do you use to communicate when you're trying to reach out the Latino community? We'll give you a, a couple of uh, minutes while you do that. Uh, I'll give you uh, two minutes so that you can uh, type in the chat what is it that, that, that you're using today. Uh, the event that you can see on the photograph there, uh, it was done in Fort Collins. It was uh, uh, a big event. We brought all kinds of vendors that, uh, that had services for the Latino community. And all of those vendors had somebody in there that spoke Spanish. Uh, it was a very successful event. That was, uh, uh, we had live music and the most important thing, we had th uh, three food trucks that were um, giving food and the organizers pay for the food. So uh, when you will come into the, into the event, the people knew that they, they had to get a couple of tickets from the reception desk. And then with those tickets, they will get their food. So food is really important to bring the Latino community. Music, we have a, a salsa group. We had all kinds of uh, different Latino music. Uh, we also had a, a, a drag queen uh, giving some salsa lessons in there. So it was it was kind of a you know it was very very uh, open to people and everybody was excited. It was a really good successful event. Okay, so uh, we're gonna look at those uh, methods that you that you wrote in there and uh, uh, and. A, uh, a little later, and then just kind of uh, look into if you have anything extra. So I'm going to continue with the presentation. Next slide we have. Okay, so one of the things that I I try to um, communicate to uh, groups and people that invite me to talk to them or they they ask me to give them some advice is uh, these three items that I have here, and there are three bullets that I always. Uh, talk about is uh, location. When you're trying to reach out uh, to the community, Latino community, one of the things that is important is the location, okay? So first of all, if you're in your city, you are operating in your city, you need to understand and you need to find out where are, uh, is the Latino community located? Because we as a community, we tend to go to uh, places together. Uh, sometimes because of the affordability issue, sometimes because we just feel more comfortable there, or sometimes because we just came to the city and we didn't know anybody but had a couple of friends and they say, you know, just come with me and and uh, I will help you get a room or or a place. So we are in different locations in the within the city. So find out where they are, uh, build a relationship with those communities, uh, work with the nonprofit organizations that work with those communities cooperate with them, collaborate with them, because that's going to help you make those connections. Um, also, uh, if you decide that you're going to have a program uh, a, at the library, at your organization, please make sure that uh, that library, that organization where you're going to have the, the meeting, the event, whatever you're having, make sure there is a, a place that is accessible via public transportation, because uh, that is important. A lot of people do not have transportation, so they need a place that they can go easy, go back and forth, and provide a safe place to visit. Uh, uh, when I worked for uh, the city of Fort Collins back uh, a couple of years ago, we started a, a business, uh, a new business center, and we decided not to have it at the city. We decided to put uh, the business center at the library because uh, the Latino community feels more comfortable going into a library, uh, a library that welcomes them, a library that has uh, enough resources in that language so that they can come and visit. So that when you make that connection, they come to that uh, more uh, frequently because they, they, they feel safe there. Number two is the technology and the messaging that you use. Uh, the question that I had on the previous slide was, what kind of a, a marketing or what kind of a messaging do you, do you use to communicate with them? In our case, social media and emails through community partners. Uh, that's what we did when we started working with the Latino community. <coughs> we use, uh, we make partnerships with uh, nonprofit organizations, with foundations that already had uh, contacts with the Latino community. And through them, 
we uh, we passed the information to them. They gave it to the community, and then we got some uh, people responding to that. Uh, we also use uh, video messages. When we use video messages, we always try to um, to make video and messages that that appeal to the audience. Okay, if we are trying to reach out the Latino community, let's have on the videos that we put or the advertising that we put, let's have models or people that look like them. Uh, if you have a way to translate or to put subtitles on their language, it's even better because they want to see themselves. One of the things that I that uh, I notice is uh, I have never seen a commercial for one of those, like a, a, a car commercial from Tesla. They never have a, a person that looks like me driving one of those cars. Right. So and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure that we accommodate our models or or resources, everything, the images that we have. Do not use stock images. Try to, you know, find something that is more appealing to them. So and finally, uh, as I say before, the for the way to communicate with them, uh, it's important. One of the things that I discovered over the last couple of years is that uh, WhatsApp is the best way to have uh, communication with the Latino community. And when you're trying to do a Zoom meeting like this, uh, you put the Zoom meeting, make sure that you add Facebook uh, uh, streaming because that helps a lot. Once you do that, uh, there's people that is not uh, that is not savvy in terms of technology. There is the technology gap that uh, it's in, in, in our community, in my community, there is a big problem, the, the technology gap, uh, the gap. So it's important to make sure that we accommodate. Uh, uh, most of uh, Latinos have a cell phone. I will say uh, all of them, but uh, have a cell phone and know how to use it. And they know how to use WhatsApp because that's the, the application we use to call our countries, to call to talk to our families via video. So uh, WhatsApp is very important. Facebook is an extension to, to Zoom if you're gonna do something like that. Uh, the other thing, the last bullet says offline outreach. So make sure you are present at their events, like the one that I was showing you, like the one that is on that picture there. Uh, make sure that you come to those, uh, set up a table, uh, bring somebody that speaks their language. Uh, if you don't, if you don't uh, speak Spanish, bring somebody with you, some, someone from pay uh, somebody, you know, uh, a couple of, uh, or a gift certificate so they can come and, and help you kind of interact with people in their language because that person is going to bring the people in and then you can start communicating with them through that person. So, but be present, uh, set up tables, talk to them. Uh, when you talk to them, talk, talk to them at the personal level. Um, don't talk about the, the programs to begin with. When I go to a visit, uh, I'm a business um, consultant. And when I go to, to a business, the first couple of meetings that I have with them when I, uh, when I, uh, when I stop by, I don't talk about uh, the business program that I'm promoting. I don't talk about the city. I don't talk about any of the programs that I'm, I even hide my, my badge. I don't, I don't wear it. I put it inside my, and I, I hide it so that they don't see it. And I start talking to them. When I come in, I walk into a, a business and I look at their the TV that they have. I listen to the music they have, and I always find some, find something that is that I can relate to. And I start telling, "Oh, I like the, uh, Vicente Fernandez uh, or whoever is playing the, the the in the in the radio or the local sound." I tell, I start talking about that, and that's a way to start the connection. We we spend two or three visits just talking about their family. Uh, their business, uh, and, and if uh, if I don't find anything that I can relate to in terms of uh, the music, the videos, or things like that, I talk about the, the 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 ornaments they have on the walls, or the themes, or the drawings, or or uh, the the last resources to talk about the POS that they they're using. That's the 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 machine that they use to charge customers when they get an order. So it's it's finding the little things so that you can make the connection first. Uh, at the beginning, okay? And once you get that connection done, talk to them. They have really, really good stories. You can spend a lot of time talking to them and they will they will tell you all kinds of uh, funny stories and uh, really nice things that, that you can learn from them. All right, we're gonna go to the next slide. All right, so um, what do you do if, uh, if you don't have uh, a Spanish speaking person in your personal, 
you don't uh, you don't speak the language, you don't do any of that. Uh, one of my the recommendations that I always make is uh, first you have to build your internal infrastructure. You need to do that. You need to to set up a way so that uh, you can be if you want to be successful, you have to start in house. And the way to to do that is the first thing you do is budget budget for it so if you're working on your budget now or you're going to be working soon and you want to start doing uh reaching out to those communities uh next year start working your budget um you can put the, some money together and you can justify it because the results are going to be great um one of the things is put in the budget what we did at the beginning of uh, uh before i joined uh, the city one of the things that they did is they hired what they call a cultural broker a cultural broker, it was a, a nonprofit organization member that uh, knew the community, knew the language, knew the uh, some business. So they hired her to start reaching out to the community. So it was a cultural broker. It was a small contract. <laughs> they did it for three months. And, um, and that cultural broker started to bring results in. Uh, because uh, it was easy for them, she didn't have to worry about any of the any of the bureaucracy inside the city. She was her only job as a contractor for three months was to go out to the community and to start making the connections and bring people in. So after three months, she got a lot of results, and that's how they got you know to the next level, which was which was uh, getting the budget to hire me and uh, uh, as a full time position employee. And then I continue what she was doing because I also knew the community and I was part of it. So uh, that's important. Budget, the cultural broker. Uh, it's if you don't have money to to uh, for a contractor, full time contractor, or for a one full time position, a classified position, then hire a cultural broker that can help you get started. Um, also, make sure that that cultural broker or the employee that you get will you know, uh, look like the community you're trying to reach and will speak their language. Uh, I can tell you now that in my case, when I go to a, a Asian restaurant or a Middle Eastern restaurant, in Middle Eastern is a little easier because I look like them, but uh, Asian restaurant is difficult for me. I go in and even though I'm talking to the owner, I say, is the owner around? Can I talk to the owner? And she or he tells me, you know the owner is not is not in the uh, is not here. He'll be here tomorrow. But that's the owner. So uh, I don't look like them. I don't speak their language. So it's very difficult to me to talk to them. So it, it is important that, that if you you make a commitment to get to create a budget, um, then also make sure that you select the right person for the job. Uh, somebody that speaks the language and that looks like the community you're trying to focus. All right. Once you hire that person in terms of the internal infrastructure um when you um if you hire somebody that is bilingual and somebody that is, looks like the community <clears throat> make sure you don't you don't um you don't set that person up for for failure and what i'm what i'm trying to say here is a problem that i face is when i joined the city and uh, everybody at the city there was um i think uh uh, 1500 uh, employees and every single employee wanted me to translate their, their uh, things that they wanted to translate so if i was to do translation i will never have enough time to go out to businesses to go to the community so uh the first week i started to get can you translate this uh, sentence can you translate this uh, paragraph can you translate this and uh after one week i went back to my manager and i say you know what you don't you didn't hire me to be a translator my job here is to be a business advisor not to be a translator so if you want um if you want your work and the people in the in the city want to have their work translated I can recommend you a good translator, a translating business that is local, is woman on, and she can do the translation. She's a professional, she can get it done for you. You need more than one, I have two or three different translators. So, but do not set that person for uh, for failure because if you start in, uh, inundating them with uh, translation, they're not gonna get the job done. So that's one. The other thing that you have to do is pay them well. Uh, they have a skill that is that is different. 
and it's it's an extra skill that not everybody has so make sure you recognize them and you pay them well and uh, and then you provide opportunities for uh, for growing within your organization if there is any opportunities but uh, those are three things that you have to keep in mind don't just bring them in send them to work and then start floating them with uh, translation so that doesn't work and uh, that's the reason why I don't work in the place where I was hired at the beginning because they didn't they didn't recognize me so I, I moved to a different city all right so um once you have that person in, if you see results and you have some more money, you can start adding personnel because one person is not enough. You need to have a, a full department. Right now, I work for the city of Longmont. I work in sustainability and there is uh, five people working in sustainability at the city of Longmont. Uh, the city of Fort Collins, where I used to work, they had 60 people working in sustainability. So of course, they're going to get more things accomplished because it's a bigger group. So make sure that if you want to really focus on the Latino community, start adding personnel as you see results coming in. And you can justify it easily once you get those results. And uh, sometimes person, uh, a person that knows the community and understands don't know how the internal organization works. So make sure you provide a mentor so that uh, that person can feel comfortable inside and does not have to spend a lot of time in learning the system. So that will be excellent. Uh, in terms of the external things that you, that you need to do, once you have the, the internals covered, then you start working on the external. Now, let's go out to the community. How do you do that? You make the connections, as I say before. You learn from the community. You start inviting them. You go to their uh, birthday parties, to their quinceañeras, to different things. Uh, participate with them and you'll be learning from them so that you can start thinking about how you can be more um, successful at reaching out to them. Uh, partner with them. There is groups that are, are looking for partnerships, uh, nonprofit organizations that are working with the community that want to partner. And once you, good, once you get all that thing, all those things going, then you can reconnect. You go that, you connect, you work, you partner with them, and then you reconnect then you keep maintaining that relationship. Don't forget about it. If you work with a, with a community group one day, a year later, make sure you reconnect so that, uh, because there might be other opportunities for you to work with them. Uh, maintain and then keep repeating. So we're gonna go to the next slide. Some uh, uh, examples of the things that we accomplished during the time, two years, two year time frame that, that I work uh, for the city of Fort Collins in Colorado. Uh, two things that we, uh, uh, a couple of things. One is on the left, we have uh, for more than, uh, we had connections with more than 400 businesses uh, during two years. Um, a lot of those businesses were not registered within the city because they don't understand what the process is. I was able to connect with them, to get them into the system, to uh, to work with them. And uh, the, the, the word was spreading like, like fire, because once a, a good group uh, starts learning what you do and that you're there to help them, then they start telling others and, and it just grows like crazy. And in two years, I was able to work with 400 businesses. I I helped 93 companies get started in two years in, uh, uh, within Latimer County. So um, it was like a, a, a big, big uh, success story. Results brought them in and people were participating with us. It was, it was a really, really um, rewarding experience. Uh, during the time, during those, day, those two years there, I designed and, um, and got budget and got uh, also everything that I needed, the, the partnerships and everything to establish the uh, um, multicultural business and entrepreneur center. That's the next picture there. Uh, is el Centro Multicultural de Negocios y Emprendedores. That center, since I, uh, on, within the first year of my work, I realized the need for uh, Spanish uh, support for uh, entrepreneurs. So we, I decided to start this, this. I asked for the budget. I asked for uh, all the resources and they approve it. And I opened it up. And it was like, uh, we only opened two days a week. It was sitting there for four hours, Monday and Wednesdays. And we, and the first month we have 40 people showed up uh, asking for uh, help. 
the second month we have 50 people and it was just like growing and it was only two days a week four hours a day so it was a really successful story to begin with uh, people learn about it they uh, we set up a system so they could uh, either do a walk-in or log-in um, and uh, set up an appointment it was uh, it was growing really really fast and uh, a lot of people was learning about it so very successful and we did it at the, at the library for Collins and Old Town for Collins that's when we established that, that business center uh, also during the work with the uh, with businesses uh, I realized that there was a lot of need. So uh, I, I started organizing the Northern Colorado Latino Chamber of Commerce, which uh, right now is an organization, a formal organization. It took about a year to get it established, to get all the elements. And I was their advisor during the process and they're up and running, supporting uh, more businesses and more Latino entrepreneurs now. And finally, the Community Connectors. That is a group of... Uh, uh, it was 12 women that uh, lost their job during the pandemic. They didn't have uh, a job. They didn't know what to do. We got the business together and uh, I helped them organize as a business and they provide um, services to the city, to the county, to nonprofit organizations. It's an LLC company. They're helping you know, all kinds of different organizations and, and making some money now. So that was uh, some of the results that we got there. Finally, it's uh, one thing that I want you to remember, some, some cultural tips here. Uh, we, the Latino community, are very, very loyal. If you trust us and you give us your, 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 um, your support, we will be loyal with you. We also have a lot of un underutilized um, people up there, uh, talents. Uh, the community connectors is 12 women that uh, didn't have a job they uh and in six seven of them they were professionals i had an engineer there was one that was an educator there was another one that was a biology biologist i mean they they had careers in in their country and they were professionals they came here and they didn't have a job so they do have the skills we just have to kind of a find a way and they cannot use them because there is no opportunities. A lot of them were in doc undocumented, so they don't have the opportunity, but there is ways for them to revalidate their, their studies and to get uh, some kind of a licensing or something. But uh, they, they, there is a lot of skills out there. Um, we have the family values. Uh, we are not a monolithic culture and uh, Latinos, you know, we're not just Latinos. We uh, come from different backgrounds, countries, uh, cultures. Even in Mexico, where I'm from, we have different regions and we all different. So uh, we're not one single monolithic uh, culture. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, we support our family and friends and we are here because we want to have a better life. Uh, we are hardworking people. That's a common trend among the Latino community and we love to celebrate and, uh, and have fun. Okay, so uh, that's it. I hope this uh, gave you some point, uh, good pointers. Thank you very much for your um, for listening to what I had to say. And one of the things that I ended up, I'm going to end up with is telling you that we're here to invite you uh, to try these methods. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us, and uh, we. We're always willing to help give you some pointers and hopefully you'll take some of these uh, tips and uh, go for them. They're, they're worth it. They're going to give you some uh, excellent results. So I'm going to stop sharing my, my screen right now if I know how to do it. Thank you, Jose Luis. Uh, we did get a question in the chat. Yeah. Um, someone answered it, though, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you again uh, for you to answer. Uh, James asked, how does WhatsApp work in the library or nonprofit world where personal information privacy is paramount? And yes. someone asked a related question. Maybe there could be a way to send program reminders through WhatsApp. So perhaps giving us a little bit of um, insight on that. Yes. Uh, one of the things that uh, that I, the way that I've been um, kind of uh, going around that problem, because uh, as you know, I work for government, so the records of uh, items that I use from the city are subject to, to uh, somebody can request and get all the records, right? So uh, the way that we got around that, it's uh, I do use uh, the 
the company, or in this case, the, the city, gave me a cell phone, okay? And that cell phone, I use it with my, uh, for all business related items. Uh, when it comes down to, uh, and, and I don't have any, any contacts from, from the community. And when it comes down to Facebook, I always use a, um, uh, a way to put my, my um, I belong to several groups and that's what I get the information. And that's what I can find the information about. Let's say that I have a program at the library. I do the regular email and uh, a newsletter and everything that needs to be done, right? And then using uh, my personal phone, different, completely different to the city. That's what I, I, I used to uh, to talk to those groups. And I post, you know, just a flyer from the from the library. I post it in there and they learn about it. If they have questions, then they can they can go through the through the system to to ask questions. Or if they have questions there, uh, what's up is you have to be invited to those groups. You have to be or you create a group and then you invite people to join. And that group that you're talking to, they're the ones that are going to find out the information you're sending. And they're, and if somebody asks answers a question, everybody gets the same answer at the same time. So that's kind of, kind of a, how we got around during the pandemic. I didn't do that because the library that I work with didn't give me um, a, um, a cell phone, but that's a way to get around that. Thank you. Uh, I want to mention that uh, Ver Veronica uh, answered in the chat that WhatsApp is end-to-end -end encrypted, and I you guess. have the option to create a community page. Meta, who owns Facebook, also owns WhatsApp. Um, someone did, so a few people are putting questions mm -hmm. in the chat. Uh, Marta is asking a question in Spanish. Gracias, Marta. Uh, si lo ve. Uh, so, Jose Luis, can you see the chat? Yes, right? No, uh, no, not no. at the moment. Can you read it for me, please? Yes. Hola, excelente. Charla, deseo preguntar. Oh, ahí vas. <laughs> Go for it. Google, Marta, uh, you had the question? Marta. Oh, go for, Go for it. Go for it. Hola, hola. Hola, hola. Sí, Marta, te escuchamos. Gracias. Eh, decía que excelente charla y que desea preguntar en su experiencia la forma en, la, en que la biblioteca conecta con la comunidad de habla hispana. Um, en nuestra biblioteca la población de habla hispana es, es realmente minoritaria. Y, y bueno, decía en PostScript que también soy de Ciudad de México. Gracias. No, la, la última parte no la escuché, Marta. ¿Podría no, solo decía que, que también soy de Ciudad de México. ¿Que si había diversidad? No, que también soy de Ciudad de México. Ok, ok, gracias. Can, can, you, uh, can you read the question for me, Christy, please? Marta's question, so that I can uh, fully... Valentina, Valentina and, uh, read that question for us. I can do so it she, for you in English. Do you want it. it in English? Okay. Uh, I, I yo prefiero say, español, pero... Okay, <laughs> as you prefer. Uh, es que, was, es que no, no escucho muy bien, está muy bajito el volumen. Ah, vaya. Um, decía que, excelente pregunta, que decía preguntar cómo, en, en su experiencia, cómo la biblioteca conectaba con población de habla hispana. Nuestro, nuestra población, nuestros patrons de habla hispana son minoría. Entonces, eh, pues realmente... Si sí, yo soy la responsable de la vinculación y, y si sí, resulta un poco, digamos, um, es un reto. Sí. Eh, solamente eso, gracias. Okay. Do you want okay. it in English? Ah, ya entendí. Ahora sí, uh, para, uh, voy a contestar en español ahora para probar los canales. El, la, la forma en que nosotros, yo trabajé un tiempo para la biblioteca también, y uh, me contrataron para trabajar con negocios. La forma en que yo empecé fue asistiendo a, la, a, a las reuniones que me invitaran a las reuniones de las organizaciones no lucrativas. Sí, así empecé y empecé también a ir al distrito escolar porque el distrito escolar de la, de la ciudad tiene, uh, al menos en Fort Collins, tenían uh, personas que estaban asignadas a ayudar a la comunidad latina en diferentes lugares. Entonces, 
uh, y yendo con el distrito escolar, me iba a visitar a, los, a las familias con los uh, community liations que le llamaban ellos y uh, conocía gente. Y ellos, cuando sabían lo que estábamos haciendo en la biblioteca, me recomendaban. La otra cosa que hicimos fue, empezamos a hacer clases virtuales, porque ya no se podía ver en persona, en español, con el distrito escolar, nos hicimos uh, socios para enseñarle a los padres de familia cómo usar la, los laptops que les mandaron a sus hijos para ir a la escuela y cómo usar los famosos hotspots que se usaban para conectarse al internet. Porque el laptop llegó a la familia, pero nadie sabía cómo usarlo. Un niño de 6, 7 años no sabe cómo usar un laptop. Y los papás muchas veces no sabemos cómo usarlo. Entonces, hicimos unos talleres en, en línea y así fue como nos fueron conociendo. Y fuimos viendo dónde estaban viviendo y cómo, y conociéndolos poco a poco. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Anything else? Any other questions, Christy? Yes, uh, we have two questions. One okay. from Rose, uh, so I'll read that for you. Uh, Rose writes, I work in Southwest Virginia where the Hispanic community is very small, 2.5% of the population. I speak Spanish and have created a small Sp and have created small Spanish collections to get started. I'm new to this area and have struggled to make contacts with the Hispanic population. People seem mistrustful of unknown government officials, which I understand. Any ideas for breaking the ice? Yes. Uh, I think that uh, uh, that's one of the things that I did. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an example of how I uh, overcame some of the barriers with the Asian community. Uh, I don't speak their language. I don't look like them. So what I did is I I embarked in the in the task to find one community leader that was a, a, a well recognized community leader within that Asian community. And I made friends with that person. I made the connection and I say, you know what? I'm trying to do this. I have all these things. Always make sure that you are offering something, something of value for that community, okay? So in that case, I was offering, you know, I can help your uh, your parents learn about uh, how to use the hotspot for, for, to teach their children at, uh, at home. Uh, then when the, when the uh, federal loans came and we have money, I went into businesses, Asian business saying, I have money that you can apply for and it's free money for you. But before I went to the business, I went to this community leader and he is the one that took me and introduced me to them because now you have an interface to get there. So my recommendation is if you're trying to reach that community, try to get uh, uh, find out who the leader is. Uh, typically it's an organization or uh, somebody that is always uh, uh, fighting for rights for that community, uh, maybe a union or something, find that person, uh, make uh, the connection with that person and that person will help you go through. Once they understand that you're trying to help, and that will open doors for sure. Gracias. Uh, we have another, uh, we have several questions. Uh, Carla asks, since you were a restaurant owner for 11 years as a Latino, what business skills would you recommend for first time Latino business owners to learn when it comes to connecting with their library or nonprofits who offer free classes like graphic design or learning how to use the computer with the cloud or having access to data to succeed with your business? Yeah, uh, number one, it's don't assume that they know how to use the computer. That's definitely. So uh, teaching them how to use the computer, it's critical, okay? So make sure that they understand how to use the computer. Number two, for entrepreneurs, the main thing that you need to find out is there is plenty of videos for you to learn how to start a new business, okay? The, the, the process. In Colorado, we have, you have to go to the secretary of state where well, create your business plan go to the secretary of state uh, and register your business and then go to the IRS and get your EIN, which is the employer identification number. And the, uh, so those three steps and then have to uh, register your business in Google, Google business. So those are steps that are critical for any business. If you learn yourself uh, within your personal, you, you learn just by watching YouTube videos or whatever on the state that you are, Make sure that you learn how to do that and get the basics. And once you do that, then you provide some kind of a class advertising. 
I, uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you're thinking about starting your own business, here is how, okay? And make sure that when you do that, you have it in Spanish so that they understand. And once they, uh, they're ready to go, they need help with filling the application. So if you can get, it's very simple, but it's in English and a lot of people don't know how to fill it up. So it's, uh, you can learn it really fast. You are librarian, so you can do research. You can you can get it done, and uh, uh, it's really simple. Uh, I I when I did it the first time, I had to do a, a register my own company, and uh, and I started recording my steps so that I could have that video made. And I have those uh, resources at the library in Fort Collins. If you look it up, you can find them there. They're in Spanish. It's uh, explaining uh, step by step. So there's a lot of resources out there. Thank you. A uh, question from Veronica. Can you talk a little more about the community connectors? How do they work with the cities or counties? The way it works is uh, uh, what the community connectors is a group of 12 women and they live, each one of those women represent one of the single, uh, every, every single one of them represent a mobile home park. They are, they live in a mobile home park in the surrounding area of Fort Collins. So they live on each one of them. So in each uh, mobile home park, they they have friends, they have family. Uh, and we're talking a mobile home park that has 400 uh, units, right? So there's a lot of families there. So they all live on one, one of each of those. They got together, they established a company, a consulting company. Uh, one of those persons registered the business. She is the, the sole proprietor of that uh, LLC. And, uh, and then I helped them got through the system of, uh, there is a system called BitNet here in Colorado. And that system is the, the state system that you use to, uh, to make bids, to get bids from the county, from the city, from different places. So I helped them get registered there. And then once they were established and they were registered, they had access to all kinds of bids. So during the pandemic, there was need for, okay, uh, the county needs to deliver all these flyers. Okay, they apply for it, they got the contract, they, they pay them good money. And then each one of those women got their son or themselves, they just go around the, 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 uh, the neighborhood giving them flyers. Uh, another time they had a survey. Okay, fill out the survey. To give you an example, this survey, uh, they put the survey, the city of Fort Collins put a survey uh, about uh, public transportation. And they got uh, three responses in Spanish. They have it in English and Spanish. They had three responses in Spanish. They hired the connectors. Those three responses came in three months. They hired the connectors and within one week, they had 300 responses because those connectors were into their neighborhoods with their cell phone, asking the questions and filling out the surveys electronically uh, or sometimes in paper, it depends. But that's kind of a, how they operate. And uh, I mean, just going through the system, learning how the system works, they, they're able to, uh, to bid for different uh, contracts today. They have worked for the city, for the county and for organizations in town. So that's how they work. Thank you. We have another question from Carla. Uh, we have several. So what about connections with Latinos within the library who are homeless and do not see any benefit to participating with what the library has to offer to improve their mental state or in general? That is a very tricky one. At the, in the, at the library in Fort Collins, we had a, a homeless population. But when I was there at the Multicultural Business and Entrepreneur Center, when I was doing office hours there, I had a lot of Latinos that came and they needed help with the resume. They needed help because of my connections with the city and with all the different organizations, I was able to send somebody. I, I had contacts with restaurants and restaurants were always looking for somebody to work. So I had this, this Latino woman that came and say, you know what, I don't have a home. I don't have a job. Uh, I, I, I've been doing this. Uh, uh, and I was able to connect her with one of the restaurant owners that uh, brought it in and gave her a, a part-time job to begin with. So, uh, but she needed help with the resume, with uh, little things that had, uh, were not related to business, but, you know, I was there to help the community. So uh, I think that, uh, you know, if you speak the language, it will give you a lot of uh, advantage there to, to work with them because they, they want you to listen to them. 
uh, but it's, it's it's a hard problem and it's it's very common. I had some uh, a couple of uh, English speaking uh, people that came in and also wanted to get some help with the resume because they were looking at uh, doing something. One person came in trying to get some legal uh, advice, so I connect her with uh, connected her with uh, with an attorney that was doing pro bono work. So it's. As you make connections with the uh, nonprofit organizations, with foundations, with all, you're learning more and more people. So don't stay at the library. Make sure you attend all those meetings. You go to those meetings, make the connections because those are going to be handy when you're working with this community. Thank you. I'm going to ask you more questions, but uh, I do want to answer a question that was asked of us. Uh, we are recording this webinar in English and in Spanish. Everyone who registered for this event, whether or not you were able to make it into the session, will get a link with the recordings and the evaluation and all of that. So uh, just you'll get those recordings. All right. So our next question for Jose Luis uh, from Eric. Any advice on getting more support and resources from small government? Have you worked with city councils? The Spanish speaking population where I'm based is largely invisible to the city as they don't use public services. Okay. Uh, that's another another good question that is tricky too because uh, uh, our community is not used to go to city council meetings to uh, to ask for resources. They're not used to. But one of the things that we accomplished here was by working with these nonprofit organizations, by making those connections, we were able to invite them to come to city council and always uh, um, ask and and. Uh, city council when they were coming to provide uh, interpretation. So Valentina is a great resource here for uh, for you. Uh, always uh, make sure because they're not gonna come and talk about so something critical in English. They're gonna come and they're gonna feel encouraged to come if they have a way to communicate that way. So it is tricky. They don't like to go to do that. So what I what I did when I was at the library, I got uh, my, my uh, the advantage that I, the advantage that I have is that the city of Fort Collins didn't have no one that can connect with Latino businesses. So I connected with the city and I say, you know what? I do have business experience. I can help you connect with them. And uh, but at the same time, they were able to get a grant to give it to me so that I can I could help those people. You know, it's like uh, it's they're always interested. They they do uh, here in Longmont. The city provides a grant every year to the Latino Chamber, for example. And I'm sure if you don't belong to the city, then they can they and they can give you some money uh, if you do a good uh, proposal, uh, an interesting proposal that that will that will help this community. We have several questions, but since we're running short on time, I'm only going to ask one more, um, which is just the next question on the list. I'm sorry about that, but this is a very, very popular and important uh, topic, and I'm so glad to see we have so much engagement. So the final question I'll ask you, Jose Luis, comes from Carla. She asks, how can I, as a Latino, offer help without overwhelming them into joining something but not feeling like they're alone? Yeah, so I think that uh, if you provide something that is important for them, okay, uh, make sure that the topics that you're going to be uh, teaching them or inviting them to, uh, it's important for them. Not everything is uh, important for everybody. So what I did, I'm a software engineer. So when I was there, I started a computer class in Spanish for parents, and I didn't do it at the library. What I did, I made a, 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 a deal with the local school district. So what I would do is I would set up, they will provide the, the computer lab at the, at the school at night. They will provide uh, childcare and they will provide dinner. And I invited a group that was interested in learning some computer skills, basic computer skills, nothing, no programming, nothing. It's just how to move the mouse, how to open, uh, how to create a document, how to do an email, something simple. And I was doing that in Spanish at night and at the school where the children went to. And that's kind of a, another approach. Now you have children that have a lot of uh, Latino parents, you invite, and invite them and not everybody's gonna come, but you get five people. I, I had 15 people showed up to my classes because they were interested in learning that. Now, how do, uh, how do you use Zoom? You know, a lot of people know how to use Zoom today, but there might be somebody. Uh, another thing is 
you know, they, uh, a lot of these uh, Latino uh, community members are immigrants. So they're looking for help with rent. They're looking for help with uh, paying electricity or immigration status. Th those are very hot topics for this community that, that you can set up something. If you set up a, uh, let's say that you state where you are uh, offers uh, driver's license for, for Latinos, you know, provide a small class with, uh, we can help you, you know, guide you through the process of applying for a driver's license. Uh, newcomers, they want to know just how the layout of the city is. So bring them in and help them. You know, here's how you take the bus, uh, do a tour with them. You know, let's take a tour. Let's do bus hopping. You know, this is how you get to the, the shopping mall. This is how you get to this. I mean, uh, be creative. That's, and and, and I, I would also like to, um, to mention, uh, Christy, if uh, if you're willing to, you know, they can submit their questions via email, and uh, we'll try to uh, respond to them. I don't know how you wanted to handle that, but I think there's a lot of good questions here. Yes, and then there's a lot going on in the chat, so uh, so we can stop now. But I want everyone to know I'm about to put into the chat um, a link to an evaluation. Uh, if you could please fill this out. I'm also leaving on the recording just for the moment, so you know that um, you can email me or Jose Luis. Um, however, everybody who registered for this session will be getting an email from me. You'll be able to respond to that email and any questions that you have that I need to forward to Jose Luis, I will do so. Um, along with those resources, which I will also send in an email, is this post on Colorado Virtual Library I put together which includes resources for language justice, language translation, interpretation. Um, Valentina is a part of the uh, Community Language Cooperative here in Colorado. Her, uh, her resource, her organization is on there as well. Uh, and lots of other things that can be useful um, to anyone who's serving Latino, Latine communities uh, in libraries and beyond, and in Colorado and beyond. Yeah. And uh, one thing, Christy, yes. also, if, uh, if people is interested in continuing the conversation, having another webinar or another Zoom meeting, let's, uh, you know, give Absolutely. us your feedback. And if you want to, we can invite somebody else or, or do something else. Talk about yes. something else. I love to hear it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pause the record. Stop the recording now. Thank you very much. Uh, gracias a todo el mundo, uh, Valentina, and for your interpretation, and Jose Luis for attending. Um, I'm going to stop the recording, but uh, we will stay on for a little bit longer. Thank you.